Hello everyone, welcome back to Doodling Through Education. This is for my CC students, cycle three, week six, um, and this is gonna be a science video. We are going to be talking about our digestive system. First, I wanted to apologize for adding this video just a little bit late. I had some sick kiddos. I usually try and upload my videos for the following week by the weekend before. Um, so this one's a little late and I apologize for that. Um, but I will try and get next week's uploaded this weekend. I wanted to also remind you that if you have not already, please subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode of Doodling Through Education. Um, I also had a few people reach out to me on how they could support this channel, so I went ahead and included a link down in the description through Buy Me a Coffee if you want to support Doodling Through Education. And on that note, let's start doodling. Let's start by talking about what digestion is. Digestion is a process in which your body can get nutrients and energy from the food that you eat. So we begin this journey at the dinner table and we're having hamburgers. So first you pick up your juicy hamburger and what do you do? That's right, you take a big bite of it. The first stop in this process is your mouth. You begin by chewing your bite with your teeth and moving it around with your tongue. This process begins to form saliva in your mouth. Saliva has chemicals in it that start the process of breaking down the food slightly even before it gets to your stomach. It also serves the purpose of making your food mushy and wet, which is going to make it easier to swallow. Next up is the second step in our digestion, and this is the esophagus. The esophagus is a pipe that stretches from your mouth to your stomach. It is about 10 inches long. Your windpipe is also located at the back of your throat, so there is a flap at the back of your throat called the epiglottis. And it flaps down over your windpipe to make sure that when you swallow, the food you are swallowing does not go down your windpipe, but instead down your esophagus. Once food has entered the esophagus, it doesn't just drop right into your stomach. Instead, there are muscles in the walls of this tube that squeeze the food through and down your esophagus. This takes just a few seconds to complete. Next in our digestive system is the stomach. So you swallow your food and then your food hits your stomach. The stomach is a hollow organ and it actually has three main jobs. One, to store the food you've eaten. Two, to break down the food into a liquidy mixture. And three, to slowly empty that liquidy mixture into the small intestine. The stomach breaks down your food with the help of gastric juices. No, not that kind of juice. This type of juice is found in your stomach and it is made up of digestive enzymes, hydrochloric acid, and other substances that are important for absorbing nutrients and breaking down the proteins in your food. Next up is your small intestine. This is located beneath your stomach and if you stretched out an adult's small intestine, it would actually be 22 feet long. 
The small intestine breaks down the food mixture even more so your body can absorb all those vitamins, minerals, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats that are found in your food. A juice from the liver called bile helps to absorb the fats into the bloodstream. But we'll actually talk about the liver next. Your food may spend as long as four hours in the small intestine and will become a very thin and watery mixture. It's time well spent though because at the end of the journey the nutrients pass from your small intestine to your blood. And that brings us to the liver. So remember I said the liver produces something called bile which helps to absorb fats into the bloodstream. The nutrient rich blood comes directly to the liver for processing. The liver filters out any harmful substances or wastes, turning some of the waste into more bile. The liver even helps figure out how many nutrients need to go to the body and how many will stay behind in storage. Next up and last is our large intestine. It is three to four inches around and this makes it fatter than the small intestine. Like the small intestine, it is packed into the body and if stretched out, it would measure about five feet long if you spread it out. After most of the nutrients are removed from the food mixture, there is waste left over. This is stuff your body can't use. This stuff needs to be passed out of the body and the large intestine helps to prepare that leftover matter for being passed out of the body. And this brings us to the end of our digestive system. And that is all we have for today. As always, talk with your parents, Talk with your siblings about all the different steps in your digestive system. You can even talk with them about what are the most healthy foods and the things you're going to get the most vitamins and minerals out of um, through your digestive system. So on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.